This is Geometry, Chapter 7, Section 2, in which we will be studying similar polygons. When we talk about similar polygons, the basic idea is they have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. Now, that's just the basic idea. The formal definition has a little bit more to it. Okay. Two polygons are similar, this is the formal definition, if and only if their corresponding angles are congruent. That's the part that makes it the same shape as having the angles match up. And their corresponding side lengths are proportional. They're in the same ratio. Okay. They don't have to be equal to each other necessarily. They certainly can be. That would really make it more of a congruent figure instead of a similar figure, but that's beside the point. As long as they're in the same ratio, they're half the size, or they're two-thirds the size, or they're four times the size, something like that, where everything is in the same ratios. The symbol for similarity is just the tilde, the little squiggle guy. Now, don't get that tangled up with the symbol for congruence, which is the equals with the tilde over it. This is just similarity, so it's just the tilde. So they're going to ask us to write the proportions and write the list of angles so that we can show what this means to be similar. We have two figures, NPQR and UVST, that are similar to one another. And they want us to write these equal angles, write the congruent angles, and then write the proportion to go with it. Well, the order here dictates who's matching with who. So angle N would match angle U. First one matches first one. P would match V. Q would match S. And R would match T. You wouldn't even need to have the picture to be able to do that. They have to match up based on the order that they're named. That's the angles part of it. The proportion of sides is easy enough to do too. NP matches UV. PQ matches VS, QR matches ST, and then RN matches TU. So those are the four pieces that go in the proportion. Now typically you won't use all of the parts of the proportion. The only time you have to write one that's this big is when they ask you to write a proportion that relates all the corresponding sides like this. If you're going to use it, you're not going to need all of those pieces. But just when they ask you to show the definition is when you need that. Now we said they're proportional. They're in the same ratio. That ratio that they all have in common is called the scale factor. And they're going to ask you to write scale factors, and the key is to notice the order of the comparison. Which one they name first is the first part of the scale factor. We have two triangles. If they ask me for the scale factor for PQR to TUV, okay, I need to take a pair that match up, so 4 matches 6. PQ matches TU. 4 matches 6, which reduces to 2 thirds. I could have done 8 to 12, that would also be 2 thirds, or 6 here to 9 here would also be 2 thirds. Now, if they ask me in the other order, TUV to PQR, now I would have to go 6 to 4 which reduces to 3 halves. Notice they look a lot alike, but they're reciprocals of each other because the order 
of which one came first dictates which way you write the scale factor. Just make sure you're aware of that. Okay. They're also going to ask us to find the value of the variable, or variables in this case, if we know we have similar triangles, JML similar to QST. Okay. Well, if it's JML, JM matches QS, so 4 matches with 5. 4 matches with 5 because JM matches QS. ML matches ST. So ML matches ST. Well now from here it's easy. Cross multiply, distribute, add the 15, and divide. And now we know what x is, 0 0.9. Similarly, to find y, I'm going to stick with 4 and 5 because numbers are easier to work with than 6x minus 3 would be. 3y minus 2 has to match 2. It's the only ones left. Cross multiply, distribute, add 10, and divide. That gets us values for x and for y. And remember there on that last one, the key is knowing which ones match which to write your ratios with. Okay. Our very first theorem of the chapter deals with the perimeters of similar polygons. If you have two similar polygons, then the perimeters have the same scale factor as the corresponding sides do. Okay. So our job is to figure out, in this case, the scale factor from MNPQ to XYZW, and then find the perimeter of each polygon. Well, the scale factor should be easy to do. MNPQ to XYZW, I have... WX is my side over here, so I'll be interested in MQ. 8 to 4, which is 2 to 1. That's the scale factor. Now we can get the actual perimeter of P M and PQ. We know the ratio of them is the same, 2 to 1. So 2 to 1 is 34 if we add all these numbers up to x. 2x equals 34 when we cross multiply and then we divide to get x. So the perimeter of x, y, z, w is 17. And just to make sure we know we have it, the perimeter of m, n, p, q is 34. We had it here. I'm just stating it for the record more than anything else. So we've started dealing with similar polygons. We talked about the loose definition and then the formal definition. We made sure we understood how corresponding parts match up. Talked about scale factors and then we used ratios to find missing values for variables or for sides. And then we did the perimeters based off of our first theorem. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you and we will see you in class.